All right, we're going to do a, a real life uh, example where we try to find the center of mass of a, a non-symmetrical object. So that object is going to be a hammer. Uh, and so, you know, the uh, large amount of the mass for the hammer is concentrated at one end. And so if I were to just put uh, my fingers right, you know, at the, you know, the center of the hammer itself, uh, that's obviously not where its center of mass is. If I, if I let go, it just falls. <laughs> Um, so, uh, we want to figure out where the center of mass of the hammer is. And so to do that, we need to figure out how to deal, uh, with the different parts of it. So we're going to treat the hammer, uh, as being, uh, two components. So there's going to be two parts to our system. Uh, one is going to be the head. Uh, the other one is going to be the handle. Uh, and we're going to treat both of them as just basically being uh, symmetrical cylinders. Uh, the handle, of course, it actually tapers a little bit. It gets a little thinner at the end. And so treating it as uh, just a perfectly uniform cylinder or bar uh, is, not, is not a perfect approximation, but it should actually be pretty close. It doesn't taper that much. And there's actually a little bit of metal hammered into the very end that is going to uh, help make up for this missing mass. And so treating the handle as as just a single bar is, is a reasonable approximation, something you would do in problem solving. Uh, and then the head, again, you know, it's not, it's not um, you know, we can see there's some complexity to the shape here, uh, but if we're just trying to figure out uh, side to side, uh, what the, where the center of mass is, uh, this thing is symmetrical side to side. Um, it's got maybe some different material top and bottom, um, but all of the shapes are symmetrical uh, side to side. And so that should be absolutely fine. We can treat this uh, as, as a single you know, symmetrical object as well. Uh, we need some measurements. Um, so one of the things that we need to know is just sort of how, how uh, big everything is. Uh, and so I'm gonna measure uh, the uh, entire uh, length of the hammer and then also just the length of the head here. Uh, so the entire hammer and the handle runs through the entire hammer. So the entire uh, hammer, include, which is also the length of the handle, uh, is going to be 30 centimeters. Uh, and then the head itself uh, is going to have a width of three and a half centimeters. Uh, and we can use those measurements to figure out uh, what we'll need those. Uh, and then we also need to know the masses um, of, of the components, uh, or at least enough to figure it out. Uh, and so when you buy a hammer, they actually, the way that they sell them is based on the uh, weight of the head. Uh, and so uh, I know the weight of the head of this hammer is 12 ounces using the, the Imperial, the American system. Um, that's 12 ounces as measured on Earth, uh, which means that it should have a mass of 340 grams. So the head should have a mass of 340 grams. And then I can't, and I don't know the mass of the handle itself. I don't want to take my hammer apart, but I do have uh, a little uh, kitchen scale here uh, that I can use to uh, figure out uh, the uh, mass of the entire, uh, the entire hammer. Um, and so again, this is this is figuring out the weight. Uh, but since I know I'm on Earth, I can use the number on here to figure out what its mass is. Uh, and so the mass of the entire hammer uh, is 498 grams. Uh, and so what we want to figure out is where along the hammer would I need to place my hand uh, in order to be able to balance the hammer. We know it's not in the center. We know it's not at the 15 centimeter mark. Right, that doesn't work. Um, and since it flips this way, intuitively it should be somewhere over, you know, in between. But is it is it at zero centimeters? Is it at fourteen point nine? Is it somewhere in between? We want to calculate where exactly uh, is that position.